to generate uh, your 2D version of the survey, pretty much the hardscape version of the survey from the data that you receive from the survey area. Yeah? So for this project, I'm going to go and uh, typically you should have a file that you receive from the survey, and the file can be the 3D file, or it can be a collection of, a collection of multiple 2D files. And uh, you might have to repeat the surface, but for our purposes, we expect that our deliverable is going to be always the same standard, one survey file that contains the um, symbology, that means the features, contains the, lin the linear line work, and then it contains the surface model. Yeah. So for this project, uh, I have a, a you know a sur survey received. Let's call it survey received. And that one you're going to find typically, you're going to have it, you're going to place it down with the CAD, source file received, survey, and then you're going to find, you know, this consultant, whatever his name is for us, the city of Austin. And I put the date of today because, you know, this is when I received the survey. And this is the survey you're going to play with, you know. So and this you're going to see if it's a D dash project dash B side, that means D stands for 3D file and projects, projects, so on, you know. So this would be a SRD and so on. So I'm going to take, you know, this file. And what I'm doing with it, you know, I'm going to work with this file and I'm going to try to convert it to a 2D survey file. Now to work with this file, what you're going to do is that you can copy the file, you know, to the project directory because, you know, you want to process it or you can keep it in the same original location by opening it, but opening it in read only. But first, before you do that one, I'm going to come in here and start the file that you are supposed to get to from the template. So I'm going to browse templates and go to base files. And I'm going to know that we try to generate the 2D file. And that one, it's an X dash project. And the one you're looking for is the X project B site in here. So select that one. You can take it here from the bottom and copy the, the name of the, the file naming. And we're going to say here, click open. Once you copy it to the um, clipboard. And I'm going to say here, save. So it will be the first file I'm going to save. I'm going to go and save it in our project uh, in one drive in here. Projects, you're going to be TPW in here, going to be CAT, you're going to be a reference file, and the WG, and key it's empty because we don't have anything here. So I'm going to put it in here, Control V. This the X project gives you an idea of what's supposed to be called. And we remember our our ID for the project is SSRD. So it'll be a SRD dash B site here. So it's a 2D file, X, SRD project ID, B survey, and site is the survey site file. Click save. And you're good to go with this stuff. You know, now on this one, you're going to see that you have the circle. You can delete it if you don't need to. But at this moment, you know, we're going to just, you know, maybe we're going to delete it and save for now. And we're going to focus on processing the 3D file to generate the data that's supposed to be placed in this CAD file. And, uh, and to process that one, I'm going to go in here. Looks like I renamed, I named the file, you know, twice. The, you know, I, I renamed it, you know, to have the two dashes. So I'm going to go in here before I go to the first time I'm going to take a dash away, that my, my mistake, and open it again. So let's process the survey file. As I said before, when you open the survey file, make sure that you open it in as read only. So I'm going to come in here, open, and you look where is the survey file. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to surface files received, survey, see if Austin, and take this file. Now here, do not go in the tendency to click open. This is the one if you click open. You are in modify mode, so that means you need by just to click save, you're going to modify the survey file. That's why the option is either to copy this file and open it from somewhere else, or you can open it from here. I'm going to click here on the drop down and said open read only. Now, open read only, you're going to see that the file is open, and up on the top right corner of the file shows up a lock next to it. That means, you know, even if you try to save the file, it will not let you save it because it's read only. Yeah. Now, in this file, we see you have a surface, so pretty much you can investigate the file. You have surface, you have line work, you have symbology, like you know the trees and so on. So I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna pretty much process only the 2D line work and symbology. We don't care about the surface. The surface is gonna be part of a different workflow. So this moment, you know, we are, you know, we can start on this one by deleting the surface. So I'm gonna start here delete the surface. So select the surface and click delete. And you are left only with the symbology. And the line work for you know for the survey. Now, if you look in here at um, at the data, you're gonna see that we have in the bottom in the top here right corner we have the tree survey, and this is the it's a silphid table that's based on the uh, the cocoa points that are in the cat file. So right in here you're gonna see that this is a cocoa point. 
it's a block, but it's a dynamic hook, you know, block to it and stuff because you have like more data to it than just a regular block, it's extra data, metadata. And all those blocks are, you know, symbolized in here and they are placed in the, in the choose survey table. However, we don't use this survey table, so for your purposes, you can skip, you know, you know, dealing with this table and, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily have to copy to your, um, to your XB site. But for our purposes, we're going to go through the process of generating the 2D version of this table and generating the 2D version of the line work and the symbology. So how would I going to go about it? I'm going to start first by, you know, making 2D, 2D version of the data by starting with the data that's dependent on different data. So for example, in here, if I extract the 2D version of the symbology, like of the trees, before I extract the 2D version of the table, because the table is dependent on the, the symbology, if I extract the, the, the trees first, the table is going to be go, gone away because it's dependent on this data. So if this data doesn't exist in the CAD file, because when we generate the 2D version data, we pretty much explore the data, we take the 3D data and we explore it, so it loses all the 3D version of the data or the metadata. So without the metadata, this table doesn't exist. So because of that one, you should just have to pay attention to which data is dependent on which. And for this type of you know file, the survey file, the only stuff you're gonna see, you're gonna find point tables. Yeah. And the point tables, you're gonna try to take them and export them or explode them first, you know, you know, making them a 2D version of them. Yeah. So I'm gonna come in here, select the table first, and at the command, you're gonna you know write the command that you try to stay away from, but it's called you know explode. And you're gonna explode the data for you. So imagine you're gonna see at this moment, once you explore it, you're gonna see if it becomes a 2D block. You know, it's not a 3D block anymore. Each of these elements, it's it's substanding. If I go to properties, you're gonna see if it's an anonymous block in here. It's a U304 bit, you know, asterisk, because it's an unknown block or anonymous block. So we did that one for the table. We can look at here to see this, this data that it's dynamic, the 3D is not so good properties and text. So you can let you know leave it be. So you don't have to worry about it. Now we have to worry about like the 3D data. So in a surf in a 3D file, the only data for survey you're gonna deal with is gonna be Google points, that means the symbology. It can be feature lines, like a 3D, like 3D, uh, uh, feature lines, and it can be survey figures. Yeah. So according to the workflows, we're gonna go through, you know, pretty much making 2D version of the data. I'm gonna start in here by selecting first, you know, the making 2D version of the uh, points. And to make a 2D version of the points, make sure first of all that you have all the points on. Yeah. At this moment, you're gonna see that you know we have only um, only a couple of the data. So I'm gonna go to the layer manager, and then in here I'm gonna try to make sure that you have all the layers on. You know, so if I come in here, you're gonna if I put here by freeze or you know on and stuff. You know, you're gonna see that um, I have a couple of points off. Yeah. So it looks like the bit of breakline layers and stuff. So I'm gonna come in here and select all the layers. Control A and pa the layers, so, so you can see the full data, the full version of the data that you have to, you know, export. So in here, let's see that you know the trees. You have uh, the trees that have like you know the point numbers. You have the natural ground shots that have like the number, elevation, and description. So we're gonna go through the process of exporting that data at this moment. And to that one, you can either use the Q select and select you know, all the points in the CAD file, like in you know, all the Google points, or use our custom command that's called you know, SX underscore Kogo. That means select the SX typically command. What we have is a custom command. That's, you know, everything that you see with SX stands for select all. So you're gonna find SX Kogo. You're gonna find SX line, SX poly, and so on. You can have a, a command for almost a, every type of object that you have in AutoCAD. Yeah. So at this moment, you're gonna have a SX Kogo. You're gonna say select. You can see that it selects you know, all the Kogo points in the file. Yeah. And if I come here to the properties. You're gonna see once the selects of them because it takes a little bit of uh, you know regenerating, and depending if your survey it's very complex or not, you know this process might take a long time. You know for this one I expect we're gonna take maybe the whole process might take maybe you know you know three to five minutes because you know you have lots of point data. So in here I've selected all the points. I'm still waiting for it to itemize them and see like you know how many points there are. So now if I go to properties, you're gonna see you have 8,000. 424 points in the cat area. So this will, you know, this point selected. So now we say the points, we're gonna go to the next step. And the next step is to explode the data. So I'm gonna go at the command line and type explode. Now you're gonna let it do its stuff, you know, and that's the step where I said I'm gonna take you a while for the data to be, you know, explored, like, you know, or generated a 2D version because it has to go for each of those 8,000 points and generate, a, you know, an anonymous block of that data. So now I exported the data. 
it's like to like maybe three minutes and stuff. Sorry for the wait. Now we're gonna go to the next step, and the next step for us it be to select you know, all the anonymous blocks and generate to the version. So I'm gonna come in here and do another SX. And then I'm gonna say BLK, and we're gonna say that you have two commands. One is a BLK, and then another one is a BLKA. And BLK is the one that's used for anonymous blocks. So you're gonna select all the anonymous blocks. And you're gonna see that pretty much selected the same identical data from the first time. You know, only this time you selected the points and also the tables because this one is also anonymous block. Yeah. So select all that data. And once the one is selected, you're gonna go to the next step, and the next step is to generate the 2D version, the first the first iteration of the 2D version, because we are like two or three iterations. So I'm coming here, I'm gonna use the beefy command or the BLT underscore underscore burst. And it's the same exactly much, you know, it's the short version is beefy. If you do not know B3, just know that the command is BLK underscore, underscore burst. That means block burst. This is a custom command. It's not found in AutoCAD. It's a custom routine defined. That does, you know, what it does, you know, it takes the block and the components are just in the same layer that's supposed to be visual burst. Because otherwise, if you, if you use the regular block burst command, you're going to put them in layer zero. And you don't want to put in layer zero. You want to keep the same layers the way it's defined in the block. So I'm going to say enter. You're going to wait for it here to, you know, to go through the process of exporting the data. There you go. So we are done with the first the, the first uh, iteration. I'm going to go to the second iteration. So pretty much the same two commands. SX underscore BLK block anonymous. And we're going to do a B3 again. So you do the job. And the last iteration, I guess, is going to be. So the idea I'm going to repeat the two commands until you see when you run the black burst or the B3 command until you see select objects. If, if the task will select objects, that means you are done. Because there's nothing to select, you know, there's no more anonymous block, blocks to select. Okay, so now we're gonna be SX, I guess, underscore BLK. Let's say B3 again. This third iteration. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm done with the third one. I'm gonna go to the fourth iteration of the command. I'm going to say here, I'm going to say B3, and you see what happens now. Select objects. So there's no objects to select, you know, pretty much it's like, and, hey, I want to do the black burst, but I don't have anything to do with it, so you know you're done. So at this moment, if I go to, for example, to, let's say, to a tree, for example, if I select you know, this tree, if I go to properties, you're going to see that it has, then there's no anonymous blocks anymore, it has a plant tree. If I go, for example, to one of these uh, manholes, Let's see that the manhole has the communication manhole existing. And then each of these, you know, each of these pieces of text, you know, it's an independent piece of text. So it's not, you know, part of a block. So that's pretty much what we're looking at, you know, pretty much what we're looking to generate from a Cobo point, you generate the 2D version of the data. Now, so we are done with the Cobo points, yeah? So the first thing is the Cobo points. The second point, the second thing would be to generate the 2D version of the line work. Now, the liner can be presented in like, you know, multiple formats. One of them is survey figures. That means if you use a survey database, you can have survey figures. It can be, you know, in the feature lines. It can be a combination of survey figure feature lines. It can be 3D poly lines and so on. Yeah. So at this moment, we're going to go through the steps of like what, what we typically encounter. We're going to be survey figures first. So I'm going to go here to SX again. And be SF. So pretty much the command is survey figures, SVFG. Click enter. It's like, you know, if, if I select it and I go to properties, once you select it, you're going to see that if you have any survey figures in the cat file, says no selection, that means that no survey figures, yeah? So the next one going to be the, the next version of 3D element would be feature lines, yeah? So if I come in here, I'm going to say SX underscore FELN, feature line. When I say enter, you're going to see visually on, on the screen, you're going to see like there multiple feature lines selected, yeah? If I go here to properties, you're gonna have that you have 911, 911 emergency. So we have 911 feature lines in the CAD file. Now with them selected, we're gonna convert them to we're gonna go through the process of converting to the 2D line work. Yeah. And the, you know, when you take a, a, a feature line and you extract it, the first the first step we're gonna extract it you now will be a 3D polyline. So you can see if I take a feature line and extract it the first time, then generate the 3D polyline. So we're gonna come in here like to explode, so pretty much explode. And I explore that stuff. So if I come here again, SX, FELN, selecting all the feature lines, you can see that in the properties, properties, there's no more feature lines. Yeah, they're gone. However, if I come here, you know, but I know this one, the feature lines before, if I go to one of these objects, 
I go to properties, you're going to see that it became a 3D polyline. Up on the top is a 3D polyline. Yeah? And, our, and the thing, our end result, we don't want to get into you know, 3D polylines. We want to get only 2D polylines, you know, or just regular polylines. Yeah? So we have to go, you know, the extra step to convert them to 2D polylines. So this moment is like, you know, we're done, let's say, with the 3D elements, you know, because we do not have any more, like, we, we don't have survey figures anymore, we don't feature lines anymore. At this moment, the, 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 the last level of 3D, it would be 3D polylines, yeah. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to say here, SX underscore 3D, sorry, 3D, 3D, PL, that's 3D polylines. As I was talking about, this selects pretty much what we had before feature lines, because there's the only 3D elements in the cat bar. Now this one's selected. We're gonna type in the command convert 3D polys. This is the command the salt code. So pretty much what this one does, it converts the 3D polylines to 2D polylines. And click enter. You guys see like what before we had like you know a confused line. Now it has the dash line, the line type because they they have all of them one a single elevation, you know, so you know it's set on that one. Now at this moment you're gonna see if I select maybe this polyline, you're gonna see if I go to properties, you're gonna see that this polyline has an elevation to it, yeah. We want to for all the data to be elevation of zero. Yeah. So I'm gonna dump in here, I'm gonna do the fun. Gonna see SX, I say here poly. So we must select all the polylines in the cat file. And I'm gonna go here to properties. I'm gonna change here to what is the elevation. I'm gonna type in zero. So you put them all of them to elevation zero. We're gonna do the same exact thing for all the all the let's say all the um, survey points, you know. So if I come here to the tree, if you go to the properties for the tree, you're gonna see that the tree has uh where it says you know has an elevation, yeah. So I'm gonna come in here, we'll, we'll do what? We're gonna what command we're gonna do select all the blocks. SX something, no? Oh SX B yeah. B L K A. Not the A, it's anonymous. Not we want we do, we're done with we don't have any more anonymous. Okay. So we have, you know BLK. just B L K. If I say here SX B L K. I say select all the blocks in the cat file. If I go to properties, I'm gonna come here for you know versus the position on the Z value, and I put here zero. Now the last step, you know, it's like you no, know, the last thing in here we don't we don't want to have any what's called we don't want to have any maybe lines or arcs and so on. You know, so pretty much I'm gonna to try to convert them to polylines as well. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna say maybe I'm gonna say SX line. You can see that you have you have a couple of lines, you know. For example, you can see that you have lines from maybe from the server, you know. So it's up to you, like if you give them like this stuff, or you can bring them later to you know to 3D polylines, you know, to polylines, yeah. So so if I have it like this stuff in here, I'm gonna pretty much I can use here like maybe uh, uh, let's say escape, pre-edit, select you know here and say that means you know polyline edit. I'm gonna put here M for multiple. Select types I'm gonna say like you know P for previous. I'm gonna say enter. I'm gonna say enter. So what this one does for me is like you know it takes a line and converts it to you know, a power line. So pretty much you know, I'm using the PAD command to convert lines from a line to a power line. So if I come in here, if I say here SX underscore poly, let's see that now A, all of them are power lines, rather. Even this this one's very before they are they are lines, now they are power lines, yeah. So uh, now we're gonna the last step in here is pretty much to make sure that we don't have any 3D elements left at all, you know. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select, come in here and select, you know, all the drawing here. Of course, it take a little bit and to select all the data. I'm going to go in the properties. And in the properties, now it looks like I cannot select all the data because, like, you know, Oracle has a maximum um, selection uh, stuff, you know. So if it goes over, like, maybe, I don't know, like, well, maybe 10,000 or so on, it doesn't give you a, pro a stuff for, you know, what's available anymore, you know. So mm -hmm. you're going to select, if I come in here, select, you know, a specific area like this. So if I go to properties, you're gonna have like you know 859 elements. Yeah. If I come in here and select, you know, for example, from here to here, you're gonna give me like you know maybe let's say properties. So it has like a limit of how many elements can can you can select. You know, I mean you can select them, but it has a limit of how many they can display like properties for at, at, at a single time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I come in here, if I select you know all the elements, let's say if I come in here and select you know, let's say I'm gonna go like this maybe. Can I have a properties for them? Because they did like when I'm trying to go in here, so I cannot, you know. So this is like you know, I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any 3D elements. So, so maybe I'm gonna go with maybe in sections. You know, I'm gonna come in here, properties the first section. I'm gonna go in the drop down and see like you know, do you have anything that looks like um, like a, like a cocoa point or uh, you know, pitch line or that kind of stuff. You know, it looks like all the elements in here are 
to the elements like block references got to the elements and text text arcs leaders and polygons so all of the stuff is to the elements yeah so you are good on this stuff so this moment you know if you don't do if you don't to lose the stuff which you did at this moment you can do here maybe you're going to say file save as and put like you know you're going to say like you know did maybe this stuff you know because you can delete it afterwards if it's a temp you know as you know, because the, because the next, what happens, the next step is we're going to do a copy 00, zero page 00. zero. And if your copy 00, zero, page zero, 00 fails, like, you know, get a fail or crash error, you lost everything because you open read only. So lots of times it was like, I'm going through the, through the literally like some, lots of times you, it's better to work on a copy of the file. And then, you know, at the end, when you're done with stuff, you can click save and, you know, make sure that you can transfer the whole data. So once I have all this stuff in here, I'm going to select you know, all the data right in here. You're going to do right click. P00 zero zero, and fingers crossed. Oh, there's another option like you know where you can bring the data without without you see you have 38,000 elements. This is on the bottom, yeah. So pretty much I'm trying to copy 38,000 elements from this file to this file, yeah. Now this one it was fast for like you know for it was fast for um for data bits, you know, like for example, for like small amounts of data, like a thousand elements, two thousand mm -hmm. elements, but for bigger ones, you know. You might have to think about it, like, you know, say, hey, can I do maybe a different way to, you know, bring the data? So you can see I brought all the data in, you know, in the XB side. So at this moment, at this moment, you know, I pretty much, you know, I'm good to go on this stuff. So I'm going to go here and say maybe a layer. I'm going to say, say freeze. I'm going to say here B dash node asterisk. That means, you know, freeze all the layers that have B dash node and anything afterwards, you know. So pretty much, you know, all the B node section layer, I can freeze it all at once. Or the other option for you, you're going to go to layer manager, find all the V node layers. Right here, find the V nodes. Where is the V nodes? Right in the layer. So you can select all the V node and freeze them right here. So click on the freeze, yeah? But I can do it faster from the command line because, you know, I don't have to worry. So I'm going to say here, LA, layer, dash LA, F for freeze, and put V dash node. As we say, anything that starts with V dash node, freeze it. So I see here, enter twice, and there you go. You have everything, you know, that starts with the V dash node frozen on that one. So at this moment, you know, you have, let's say, the start of your survey. You might miss your survey file. Of course, from this survey file, you can go to the next step. And the next step, you know, for you to, to take the data, the utility data, and move it to the utility file, you know, but that one is for a different workflow. Yeah. So we're going to pretty much, at this moment, we have this base file. And then when we have like a, when we get to work for the, you know, for utilities, we're going to extract the data from here and move it to the utility. And this, in this file at the end, is going to be just the hardscape line works, like, you know, survey and sidewalks and all that kind of stuff, you know. Of course, you know, there's another file that you can enjoy from this one. You're going to see like, you know, the file that you can enjoy is going to be a property file or utility file, no property file, like easement properties and right away. So typically you're going to break down the file that takes away all the right away property and easement information puts in a separate file. Because why you try to, you know, you just try to make sure that in the survey file you have only the hardscape and the typical symbology for a site, yeah. Sites, you know, the trees, mailboxes, and so on. And all the utilities moves, moves to another file. So at this moment, you know, I'm good on the stuff, you know, maybe in the workforces like to audit the file because you want to make sure there's no errors. And there's a little bit of cleanup to in the file to make sure that, you know, everything is up to standards. So one of them that, you know, maybe I might own the file. It's like I'm gonna check, you know, maybe the, like you know all the the text, you know. So for example, like for example, because you know, some, you expect for the data to come to standards, you know, from the stuff, you know. But sometimes, you know, they might not be the stuff. So I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna come in here, select you know the text. For example, I'm gonna select all the property text, and I'm gonna go, okay, what the layer is placed on, the prop text, you know. So everything looks fine on this one. Of course, you could do this stuff before you do the whole explode, you know, to make sure before you start you know, to generate the data, everything is good in the survey file, yeah. But in here, you can do it even afterwards. So right now, I select all the files it's in the right layer, up on the type of text. And if I go to properties, it is the series property and the one point is, so this is the right, you know, style and the stuff. Of course, you can change it here to be annotative and to change to be annotative, you're gonna come in here, make sure you set it to 20 scale, it's set to 20 or anyway. And I'm coming here, change it from series property, and I'm gonna change it here to the underscore series property. And this is gonna make it annotative and then you can use, you know, the option of, um, where is the stuff in here to match your addition to layout? If you say it to yes, what happens to this stuff when you when you in your viewport you have to rotate the text? It always aligns you know to the text, you know. So it's pretty much one step down your stuff. Another thing that you might think about looking here is like you know, make sure that the you know the direction of your 
line tabs match, you know, the way they're supposed to be. Sometimes I see like this issue, like for example here. Uh, if you can notice that the issue, like, you know, this line tab shows up, you know, the this stuff is on the inside, that's the way it's supposed to be. However, on this side of the, the line work, this stuff, you know, points outside. So how would you make it, you know, to point inside because it's supposed to be inside, you know. So this, this teeth of the line tab should be inside of the, you know, pretty much inside the roadway because this is the roadway area. So to do that, I'm going to do here in reverse. I'm going to select you know, the line tab, right click, and you know, flips it the other way, the way it's supposed to be, like you know, per standard. Yeah. You see, like the same stuff I have to do in here. So it's a little bit of cleanup you're supposed to do. You know, this is expected from the um, from the designer to you know take care of that stuff. So, so at this moment, I'm going to say save, and I'm good done on the existing tool. Of course, there's much more that can be done to it, you know, but I don't have time to cover this stuff. We're going to cover maybe once we get to the duration of the production files to make sure what to keep on, you know, keep an eye on and so on. But at this moment, you know, we have our starting file for the survey file, the XV side there. 